seven ways you're being lazy and pathetic we're gonna get you to stop that i'll list them all and then we'll talk about them in detail comfort treatment clarity confrontation time reward the unknown comfort is like a slow death the more comfortable you are the less you're actually living life is not meant to be comfortable all the time and if you think to yourself well no i would love to be comfortable all the time okay perfect fine let me give you an example we'll we use our imagination and then let me know how you would feel about this okay if i gave you a mansion to live in i told you you can live in this mansion free of charge you don't want to have to worry about taxes you don't got to worry about bills you don't got to worry about money whatsoever this house is free to you electricity water heat all that good stuff free of charge. You can live in it. All I need you to do is sit on the couch and I'm going to feed you Oreos and milk for dessert and you get chicken as a meal, chicken and rice, beans, whatever. All you have to do to keep the house is sit on this couch, eating your rice, your chicken, your beans, and your Oreos and milk for the rest of your life. That's all you got to do. And watch TV. You can watch anything that comes on TV. You got, you got all the channels, every piece of entertainment. You got YouTube Premium Plus Plus Plus. You got Corn, 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 uh, HUB. Um, you got everything available to you. Food, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I forgot to tell you. And the caveat, as much as you eat, you'll never get fat. Let's, let's just, let's just even take it up a notch. Okay. So there's no consequences to you eating all of this food, all these Oreos, all this milk, all this chicken, all these beans, no consequences. You won't gain a liquid weight. You'll keep a, a tight six pack. Initially you might think, oh, well, that's, that's amazing, right? That's awesome. I, I, I love that. You know, that's, that, that'd be great. I get to sit on the couch. I get to watch TV. I get to relax. I get to do whatever I want, eat as much as I want. I don't have to worry about anything. No responsibilities, no work, no, no chores, no, no this, no that. I don't have to worry about someone uh, playing me. I don't got to worry about someone cheating on me. I don't got to worry about someone not being able to take care of me or provide for me. I got, I can just live an enjoyable, easy life of comfort. It's exciting in the beginning, right? Because the first few hours, you're like, oh, I get to eat, I get to do whatever. And then a day goes by, you wake up the next day and you're like, okay, I get to go downstairs, I get to eat chicken, I get to I get to eat rice, I get to eat beans, everything tastes so good, I get the cookies, I get the milk, like it's so awesome. And then the third day comes and you're like, okay, day three, more, more cookies and milk, more, more chicken, more rice, more beans, all that good stuff. And then a week goes by and you're like, oh, well, I guess this is my life now, you know, sitting on the couch every day and um, watching TV and eating. It's so comfortable. And then a month goes by and you're sick of it. You're sick of being able to sit down, eat whatever you want, watch whatever you want, entertain yourself for as long as you want and never actually going through anything. You don't got to work out. You keep your six pack. You don't got to work out. So it's not like there's any consequences to enjoying your life. You get to just sit back and relax literally for the rest of your life. But nobody wants to live that life. Part of growing is experiencing. And part of experiencing is experiencing good things and not so good things. Is experiencing amazing things and things that make you or that are not so amazing that make you uncomfortable. Right. Things that um, bring trauma things that don't feel good, things that uh, make you sad, make you mad, make you angry, make you feel something, right? There's no way to understand any one particular emotion if you can't also experience the opposite emotion. If my entire life was joy, I would never be able to actually comprehend it as joy because I've never been angry. I've never been sad. I've never been baseline. Still in your everyday life, you're constantly seeking comfort. Me as well. Okay, we all do. It's natural. We all constantly seek comfort because comfort is familiar, doesn't require change. It doesn't require us to be uncomfortable because being uncomfortable or making change is painful. But the problem is if you never allow yourself to be uncomfortable, you'll never grow and you'll never get the things in your life that you want to see. If you want an amazing, awesome man, a hot, awesome husband who will treat you well, take you out on dates, take you shopping, make lots of money, spend time with you, all that good stuff, I'm sorry. You're probably going to have to change your environment from going to the club every week. So anybody that gives you a solution in life or in your relationships that feels comfortable to you, 
I would advise you to, to, to not do that. <laughs> I'd advise you to ignore that advice because truthfully, that won't do anything for you. Number two, we have treatment. Now, you're probably thinking when I say treatment, you're probably thinking about the treatment of others. But I'm really talking about the treatment of yourself because you can be lazy in the way that you treat yourself and then you attract people who are also lazy in the way that they treat you. I want you to imagine a scenario in which we're in a relationship and I tell you, I hate when people hit me in a relationship. I can't stand it when people hit me. If you're going to hit me, we're not going to be in a relationship. I, I dislike that so much. You better not hit me or this relationship is over. I'm warning you, you better not hit me. And then every time I make a mistake, I write a typo on Microsoft Word. I literally slap myself in the face. I write a single typo. I slap myself. You stupid idiot. Why you, you're so dumb. Oh, you're so dumb. I'm like punching myself in the face, banging my head against the wall. You're such an idiot. How could you write that typo? You don't know how to spell successful with two C's and not one. And I'm telling you, don't hit me in our relationship. But every time I make a mistake, I hit myself. I'm not saying that you're going to start hitting me, but you're going to start saying, you're telling me not to hit you. You're going on and on about how I shouldn't hit you if I'm upset at you and you're banging your head against the wall until it bleeds because you made a typo on Microsoft Word. You're getting angry at me because I pushed you when we were in, our, when we were in an argument. The treatment you expect should be the treatment that you give to yourself. And if you become so lazy with the way that you treat yourself, you're self-sabotaging. Number three, we have clarity because a lot of you guys are choosing not to have clarity in your life. How many of you have went a majority of your life without clarity? Let me know in the chat. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, then you probably don't have clarity. I'm just going to tell, I'm just going to be honest with you. So for those of you guys who join me every day, you've probably heard this example before. If I told you that I wanted you to go to the airport and pick up my friend because I can't get to the airport to pick up my friend. I've got a work thing. I've got a bunch of stuff to do, so I won't be able to get there. I would really appreciate it if you could go to the airport and get my friend for me. You'd say, great. Okay. Yeah, sure. I got some time on my hands. I'll go pick up your friend from the airport for you. What does your friend look like? I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about that. You, you, you don't need to know what my friend looks like. You'd go, oh, that's strange. Okay. What time does your friend get off the flight? No, no, no. Don't worry about that either. You don't need to know what time my friend gets off the flight. Uh, okay. What airline are they traveling from? No, no, no. Don't worry about the airline either. You don't need to know that. What's their name? No, no, no. Don't worry about my friend's name either. You don't, you don't need to know my friend's name. Just go to the airport at a time and look for my friend and take my friend from the airport and bring them back to my house. Please do that for me. I need that done. Okay, when should I do it? No, 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 don't worry about the time. Okay, but if you gave me a name or a hair color or anything that I can go by, I'll be able to know if that's your friend. No, 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 no. I just want you to go to the airport and find my friend. Okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to mosey on down to the airport at whatever time, because you don't know what time my friend's getting to the airport at. You're just going to sit there yelling, Hey, I'm Thomason's friend. Is anyone Thomason's friend coming off the airplane? And you're going to yell for hours because you don't know when your my friend's coming. You're going to sit there going, Hey, are you Thomason's friend? You're going to go up to the, to the five foot one Asian woman. You're going to say, Hey, are you Thomason's friend? She's going to say, get away from me. You're going to go up to the 65 year old white man. You're going to say, Hey, are you Thomason's friend? Get away from me. You're going to go up to the six foot four black man gonna say hey are you thomason's friend before you're gonna walk up to everyone who looks like they could be my friend or who doesn't look like they could be my friend and you're gonna ask every single person if they're my friend you're gonna yell and scream you're gonna run around like a chicken with your head cut off looking for my friend you'll spend hours there but in reality my friend passed you the moment that you got to the airport, but my friend had his headphones in, so he didn't notice you or hear you calling my name. My friend spent so long waiting at the airport that he decided to take a taxi after 30 minutes and he left. 
You spent eight hours yelling and screaming at that airport and my friend was long gone. All because you didn't have clarity. You wasted your time. You wasted hours of your time because you didn't have clarity on who you were picking up from the airport. If you were to understand who you're looking for, what time you're looking for them, what they look like, what their name is, if you had all of those details, you wouldn't have spent time asking the small Asian woman if they were my friend. You wouldn't have spent time asking the 65-year-old white man if they were my friend. You would have been able to pinpoint exactly who my friend is and find them with a lot less effort. The same way, if you don't have clarity in your own life, you'll spend a lot of time wasted looking for the wrong people, spending time with the wrong people, talking to the wrong people, running around and chasing after the wrong people. When the person you should have been looking for walked right past you. When the career you should have been looking for walked right past you. When the opportunity you should have taken walked right past you. But because you don't have any clarity in your life, because you don't know what you want or what direction you should go in, because you don't know what color my friend's hair is, how tall they are, what time they're getting off the flight, you have no idea that what you were looking for, what you were seeking, what you needed, the dream life, the dream person, the dream relationship, walked right past you. And you spent all your time yelling and chasing after all these people who weren't what you needed or wanted. All because you didn't take the time to sit down and really think about what you want and really think about how you're going to get there. And you won't spend so much time on people and with people stringing yourself along, stringing yourself along, stringing yourself along, stringing yourself along. Because make no mistake about it, when you waste your time on people who aren't in line with the relationship that you want or the partnership that you want, you're wasting your own time. Number four, we have confrontation. Confrontation is part of being lazy because when you're always trying to avoid confrontation, when you're constantly trying to avoid addressing issues, that's laziness. Your desire to be comfortable is pushing you to be lazy and not address things that are problems or issues in your friendships and in your relationships. It also makes it very hard for you to set boundaries when you're always trying to be as have as little confrontation as possible. It's comfortable to sit back and just be like, well, you know, you don't treat me right. You kind of disrespect me. You kind of don't treat me how I deserve to be treated in a relationship or in a friendship. I'm talking about your girlfriends too. Okay. But I don't really want to be too confrontational. So, you know, I guess we'll just, I just, I won't address it. I won't address it. How is someone supposed to treat you how you deserve to be treated when the moments that they don't treat you how you think you deserve to be treated, you don't address it? How is that supposed to work? Let's say I'm in a relationship with you. We go on a couple of dates and I let you know, hey, by the way, you know, um, I super appreciate you and, you know, I, I love you so much and I just care about you so much and I think we're building such a good relationship here. I just want to let you know that regardless of what happens, you can cheat on me whenever you want. I wouldn't even consider it cheating, but I'll never cheat on you. You can have the passwords to all my phones. You can meet all my friends. You can meet my mother, my brother, everyone in my life, right? And you can see all my DMs, have everything, right? I will never cheat on you, but you can cheat on me whenever you want. You is I don't even call it cheating. You just go out and be with whoever you want, whenever you want. Sleep with whoever you want, whenever you want, and I will still be with you and be here for you at all times. You're probably going to be like, well, that's really weird. But you're also going to be like, well, I guess if you don't stand up for yourself, then, and you have no respect for yourself and all that good stuff, I guess I'll do what I want. If you don't have any boundaries, then why would I create boundaries for myself? If you're telling me I can go out and I can sleep with whoever I want, why would I sit here and be the one to tell you that no? I won't sleep with whoever I want because I just, I won't. If you're telling me that you have no boundaries, you have no respect for yourself, you'll allow me to do whatever, whenever, however, okay, then I, I'll just do that. If you don't feel disrespected, then I, I don't feel disrespected disrespecting you because it's not disrespect. When people disrespect you or when people don't treat you how you think you should be treated, you have to stand up for yourself.
And if you're too lazy to stand up for yourself, don't expect someone else to come and start fighting your battles for you. There will be no there will be no mother, father, brother or sister or best friend that will come and fight your battles for you more than they will fight for themselves. If you're expecting someone to come around and save your life and, and show you the world and do everything for you, well, 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 you're you're going to be looking until you're blue in the face. Nobody is going to come on this planet Earth and treat you and pour more into you than they do themselves. So if you're waiting for that, you're going to be waiting forever. If you're hoping that someone will come along and stand up for you more than you stand up for yourself, you're going to be waiting forever. You're better off picking up your pants. Is that even a saying? Picking up your pants, picking up your bootstraps, one of the two. Having some self-respect and standards and confronting people who don't respect you or disrespect you or cross your boundaries so that people know that when they come around you, they better act right or act right. One of the two. Number five is time. Everything that you want in your life, you always want it quickly. And you feel like if you don't get it quickly, then it's not worth you investing in it at all. But the problem is, like I said earlier, anything worth investing in is going to take some time. I'm not saying that you can't see drastic changes in a short amount of time with putting in a lot of effort, but you got to put in effort. You got to put your mind there. You got to start manifesting it. You got to start thinking of it. You got to start attracting it. You got to start doing things for yourself to attract it takes work. I want you to imagine, I told you, I'll give you an all expenses paid trip across the world. I'll take you on a vacation. For those of you in the UK, imagine I said, I'll give you a free vacation to Miami. Or if you live in the, in the US or in North America, imagine I said, okay, I'll take you to uh, Paris, all expenses paid. You get to stay there for a month. Yeah, I'll even, I'll, I'll give you all expenses paid and I'll pay you to supplement that you'll have to take time off work. You get to go to Miami, get to go to all the best clubs, all the best restaurants, all the best spots, all the best events. You sit with all the celebrities, everything paid for all that good stuff. And then I said, oh, but the trip is, uh, the, the, the trip and the journey is going to take you about 12 hours to get there. And imagine you turn that trip down simply because it takes a long time to get to the destination. Is what I'm offering you worth taking a 12 hour trip or no? I say that to say, Time should never be a reason that you don't do something because the reality of it is if something is good enough, if something is amazing enough, rewarding enough, it shouldn't matter how much time it takes you to get there. All you should be focused on is working towards that. So as it relates to your relationships and your life, you shouldn't be worried about, oh, uh, but if I have to work on myself, then I won't be able to go on a date tomorrow and find my Prince Charming. Don't worry about that. Worry about taking care of you right now, working on yourself right now, so that when Prince Charming does show up, when you're, the relationship that you need and are ready for is in front of you, you'll be ready for it. And even if it doesn't happen right the second, that doesn't make it not worth going for. It doesn't make it not worth shooting for. Number six, we have the reward. And the reward is related to time because a lot of times when you become so lazy doing things, because you're looking for everything that you do to have the most massive, amazing reward. You literally trick yourself out of getting the life that you want because you only want to spend your time and energy doing something that brings you back some sort of massive reward. And if you can't see the massive reward behind what you're doing, well, then it must be a waste of your time. Imagine a scenario in which I said, hey, the only time I want a Christmas gift from you is if the Christmas gift you're going to give me is worth over $10,000. The only time I want a Christmas gift from any one of my friends or family or significant others is if they spend more than $10,000 on the Christmas gift. I probably won't get many Christmas gifts. Maybe I'll get one in a lifetime. The same way when you're always looking for the reward whether it be in your career, in your life, in your relationships, when you're always looking for, oh, if I spend two seconds doing it, I better see the most crazy, amazing reward or else I'm not doing it. You're probably not going to get much good of anything in life then if the, you're always waiting for the massive reward. Because sometimes, actually a lot of the time, the reward is unknown to you because it's impossible to predict the future unless you manifest it but it's impossible for you to know exactly how things are going to work out for you. There is a process to putting your energy towards something 
even though you don't know exactly how it's going to work out, that doesn't mean it's not going to work out though. That's how the manifestation works is putting your mind towards something, putting your mind on something specific, working towards it, even if you don't know how it's going to work out. And number seven and the final one, and I kind of gave it to you guys earlier, the unknown, because you can easily become lazy in pursuing things that are unknown. I, this is where I want to I want to ask you guys an interesting question, and I want you guys to be honest with me about how you feel about this, because I, I really want to get your opinions on this. OK, I'm going to give you two options. OK, you only get two options. And I want you guys to tell me in the chat. This is where I want everyone to participate because I really even in the YouTube chat, I really want to know how you guys feel about this. Option number one, you can get treated amazing by your ex. All the things that they did to you that you felt were bad or negative or that you didn't like. All of that's gone. You only get the best parts of your ex and all the things that were bad before are now good things. They do the opposite in that sense. Or you can go on a date with a hundred other men and they will either play you severely. And I mean like play you severely, like dog walk you, like cheat on you and just go crazy. Like you'll just be like, I had no idea. Or they'll treat you even better than your ex would have treat, treated you. Which option are you going to choose? Are you going to choose being in a relationship with your perfect ex who's now perfect or going on on these dates with these guys who could possibly treat you even better, but also could possibly do you super crazy? It's a lot harder to go on dates with new people and meet new people with the possibility of you not feeling the same, you not experiencing the same, you not creating the same memories or having the same vibe or having the same chemistry. All that stuff is un known and things being unknown are scary. So a lot of times in the process of our laziness, we tend to go back to people who we're comfortable with because we're scared of the unknown because unknown is change. Like we talked about earlier and change is scary. So in order to avoid change, we like to position ourselves with the people we are most comfortable with, even if the relationship hasn't worked out for a reason, even if the situation hasn't worked out for a reason, the job, the career path, whatever it may be, hasn't worked out for a reason. And we find ourselves in a position where rather than moving forward and being like a train that is moving forward to a destination, we're like a hamster wheel that's going in circles and circles and circles and circles and can never escape. And we wonder why day 165 looks exactly the same as day one, because we're constantly going back to the people that we're comfortable with simply because we're too lazy to change. And you know, the only person that suffers when you're lazy and don't want to uh, be uncomfortable and make a change and actually move forward and find the relationship that you need. The only person that suffers is you.